your spiritual growth is one of the most important things in your life. And the reason for that is because the more genuinely like Jesus you become, the more authentically human you become. So how do you grow spiritually? Well, in this video, I wanna give you one crucial key for spiritual growth. Hey, welcome to The Bible and Life. My name is John Whitaker, and we're gonna be in Luke chapter eight in this video. We're gonna look at an absolutely crucial key to spiritual growth that comes out of a story, a parable that Jesus tells. And be sure to stick around to the end of this video because at the end I'm gonna give you a tip for practicing what Jesus teaches that is often overlooked, that's often minimized. All right, let's jump right on into it. Luke chapter eight, Jesus tells a story about a farmer going out to plant in his field. It's a familiar scene because so many people were farmers in Jesus' day and age, and in their day, a farmer would have like a seed bag and he would walk through his prepared field and he would cast the seed uh, as he went. And so Jesus tells the story and the farmer is throwing out his seed and some of the seed lands on the path around around the field. That path is, you know, trampled down from lots of feet walking on it. It's hard, so the birds come and eat up that seed. As he's throwing out his seed, some of it lands around the edges of the field where the rocks have been piled up. And there's hardly any dirt in that spot on the field. And as a result, the, the dirt is shallow, the roots don't really go deep, the plant grows up quickly, but then it shrivels up when it gets hot in the sun. As he continues to throw out his seeds, some of it lands along the edges of the field where the thistles, the thorns, and the weeds are growing up because they haven't been taken away. It's not the heart of the field. And those seeds begin to sprout, but they're kind of choked out by the weeds that are around the field. And then finally, some of that seed actually lands on the prepared soil that's good and ready for the seed, and it grows and produces a massive crop. Now, this parable is included in Matthew's gospel, Mark's gospel as well, but only here in Luke's gospel are we given a very, very important little detail that gives us this key to spiritual growth. As Jesus begins to explain the parable to his disciples, we learn that these four different soils represent four different hearts, a hard heart, a shallow heart, a distracted heart, and a good heart. And the good heart is the heart that hears God's word, welcomes God's word, and in Luke's gospel, holds it fast. Only Luke mentions that detail. Only Luke tells us that this heart holds fast to the work. He holds on to it. It's not just like water through a pipe, right? Like not just checking off a checkbox on your spiritual to-do list. Oh, I read my Bible today. Oh yeah, I've read that passage before. No, he holds the word fast. He holds it close to him. He holds it tight. He holds on to the Word of God. I'm a tea drinker, and you can mock me if you want. I drink a lot of tea, but here's the thing. When you make a cup of tea, you've got to put the tea bag in the cup. You've got to pour the hot water into the cup, and you've got to let that tea bag steep in that hot water long enough that the water absorbs the flavor, right? You don't just put the tea bag in and pull it out immediately. No, you let the bag soak in that water until the water absorbs the flavor of the tea. And the same is true for you and for me with regard to our spiritual growth. We can't just you know, read a little snippet of the word here and there, see a little Christian meme on Facebook or Instagram or on Twitter uh, that has a nice little Bible verse on it, say, oh wow, that's interesting, and just let it go through our brain and you know, like in one ear and out the other and just flow on by. No, we need to soak in it. We need to absorb it until our mind, our heart, our soul is flavored by the Word of God, until we soak it into the very center of our being and we think biblically, we look at the world biblically until it's just a part of who we are. We understand God's way of thinking. That's this crucial insight. If we want to grow spiritually, we've got to hold on to the Word of God, hold it fast hold it tightly into our life and make it a part of us. Now, how can we do that? Well, there are a number of things that are important to that. We've got to slow down. We've got to carve out space to read it and reflect on it, right? So slow down, read the Bible regularly, reflect on it, think about it, right? Ponder it. But here's the tip I want to give you that is often overlooked and is terribly important, and that's this. We need to read imaginatively. Read 
imaginatively. We need to engage our imagination. And as we read the Bible, we need to picture it, right? We need to see it. If we're reading, say, a story out of the Gospels about Jesus and his disciples and something that's going on, then imagine it. Try to imagine being there, standing in the crowd and watching what's going on or being one of his disciples and experiencing the story. Feel it. See it. If you were going to make a movie about it, what would the movie look like? If you're reading, say, a teaching text, still read imaginatively. Begin to picture what would it look like to live this out if I did this, if my family did this, if my small group or my church family lived this out? What would it look like? How would we act? What would it see? Put your imagination into gear and picture living out the text. Picture what this text looks like, what it would have looked like for the original audience and what it would have looked like for you. And as you read imaginatively, guess what happens? You absorb the text. You start, to, you start to see and think, and it becomes a part of you much more deeply than if you just quickly read through the text. And so as those who have good hearts, let's hold fast the Word of God. Let's read it. Let's reflect on it. Let's imagine it. Let's pray it into our heart and soul. As we read it, we understand it. Let's begin to talk to God about what we're reading and ask for His help and His grace in living it out and hold tightly to the Word of God. And if we do, we'll be good soil with a good heart and we'll grow to maturity and we'll produce a crop a hundredfold. Hey, thanks for tuning into this video. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, drop a comment, let me know what was helpful to you, and I will talk to you soon on The Bible in Life.